Today in the news, we got mostly some good stuff coming from NVIDIA and Intel finally being reasonable. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. So, the chip shortage, it's been pretty bad. I mean, it started all the way back in 2020 and we're still in it. Actually, we're in deeper than ever. And according to what we've heard so far from AMD, Nvidia, and Intel, things were going to stay the same, if not get worse, throughout 2022. Well, it looks like at least one company is changing its tune and it's at least trying to do something about it. And that company is Nvidia. During the UBS Global TMT conference last Monday, Colette Kress, the CFO of the Green Team, said this, We've been able to grow quite well during this year, each quarter sequentially growing, and we do continue to plan to do so for Q4. So we believe that uh, we will be in a better situation in terms of supply when we look at the second half of next year. This is a way more optimistic CFO than she was back in April when she said that supply would remain lean throughout 2022. This means that the uh, shortage will probably start to recede by mid 2022. And I know, Receding doesn't mean stop, but let's be real, any kind of relief here is well appreciated, especially since the uh, company is planning its next generation of GPUs for the end of the same year. Speaking of NVIDIA, the RTX 2060 12 gig is making the rounds. Now, you know the whole story already. The company decided to re-release the 2060 with 12 gigs of VRAM and a few tweaks here and there. But is this new influx of GPU making a perceivable difference? Nope, at least not so far. What's worse is that according to Tom's Hardware, one AIB said that their resource for RTX 2060 12 gig cards will be mostly for miners. Seriously? Now here I thought that this card would suck for mining. Turns out it's more efficient than an RTX 3060 LHR or a 6600 XT. So yeah, I don't think that these GPUs are going to make it into gamer hands anytime soon, or at least not yet. Nvidia did tell PC Gamer that production should be ramping up throughout this month. So availability would only get better by early next year. So how does it perform in games? Well, a outlet did put it through some benchmarks. Now it's a bit of a mess, especially given the fact that they didn't even test the six gigabyte version of the 2060 with the rest of the cards, but overall on average, it's about 10 to 15% slower than the RTX 3060. So yeah, not the greatest card, especially since we don't have an MSRP for it and it's selling for like 700 euros uh, out in Europe. And lastly, with NVIDIA, we finally got some dates. The RTX 3050 has been making quite the rounds on the news and all we had in terms of release timeline was early 2022. Well, early it is because according to our current leaks, NVIDIA will launch it at CES on January 4th. As for the actual release date, the GPU will be available on the retail shelves on January 27th. That's great for the 3050, but what about the other rumored cards? Well, we don't have a date, but scratch that. Sorry, had to come back here real quick because while I was editing, new information came to light. According to sources at videocards.com, the 3090 Ti would also hit the stores on the same day as the 3050, so January 27th. At this point, it will probably be announced on the same day. And lastly, the 3070 Ti 16 gigabytes will be announced at CES, but the release date would actually be a little different, a little sooner. This one would come out on January 11th. The only missing GPU here is the RTX 3080 with 12 gigs of VRAM, although it was found on a recent EEC filing from Gigabyte, so maybe we'll see it around the same time. Who knows? 
Moving on to some Intel news, the biggest complaint that I've had since the launch of Alder Lake CPUs was the platform costs. I mean, if you want a 12600K, which costs around $299, well, you'll have to pair it with a motherboard, and that brings your platform costs to a minimum of $500 US. That's a lot of Canadian rubles. It's kind of ridiculous. Well, we're finally getting signs of new motherboard chipsets for Intel's 12th generation. This information comes from Momomo US over on Twitter, and it shows three new motherboard chipsets, H670, B660, and H610. Now, now, as usual, they gradually get fewer and fewer features as you go down the list. For example, none of these new ones support CPU overclocking, but at least the H670 and B660 models support memory overclocking. So you won't be throwing out these XMP profiles. At least every chip there supports at least the first slot as PCIe Gen 5, although it is up to the actual board manufacturer to implement it into the board. Oh, and all of them have have a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe slot except for the H610 chipset. If we base ourselves on the 500 series for the price of these upcoming motherboards, then we'll see anywhere from 80 bucks to 150 for one of these boards, depending on the feature set that you want. I gotta say, specifically for the memory overclocking, I wouldn't touch the H610 chipset. It's way too cut down. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. In any case, guys, that is pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here, to subscribe to the channel um, right here to show appreciation to my uh, non-homelessness beard anymore. Um, and that's pretty much it. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. No, no, it, it didn't.